Hi, this is Lori from CustomizedWalls.com and one of the moderators for Interior Design Community. We have a great show today. I have Susan Sarah as our kitchen and bath moderator and also as a guest, which is so fun. We never get to do that, right, Susan? That's right. This is great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about a subject that I think is close to our both of our hearts and, and I think would help interior designers to learn from our experiences. And that is how to diversify your interior design business by, by offering a product line. Um, let's talk a little bit about why you would want to do that. And know, Susan, that you have gotten into a couple of different product lines. What, what was that catalyst that pushed you to try to do that? You know, that's the key question, Lori. It's an excellent question. And you know, it, it, sometimes the answer can be simple or it can be a little complicated. I think in my case, um, I have two brands that I brought to market, and in one case, I was I just felt that I was moving away toward doing the business I had been doing for 20 years. I was moving away from doing local kitchen design. I became more interested in uh, and, and broadening actually broadening my marketplace. Uh, I had toyed with doing my work a number of different ways by a consulting around the country. I mean, I first started out doing business one way for many, many years, which many of us do. Then that wasn't working for me anymore. So the next was consulting around the country. And then, you know, it, it's sort of a personal story for me because um, one of my brands, Scandinavian Made, I always had a dream to uh, import these particular products. So that was sort of always kind of lingering around. And so the motivation was, well, you know what? I, maybe I am transitioning to doing something else. And and I, I was just sort of, it was an easy transition. It wasn't a bombshell. But I think if you listen to your voice and see, are you bored? Are you tired? Are you just not loving what you're doing anymore? That could also be a pathway toward, you know, giving some thought. Uh, well, what what might come come next? What gives you more passion, or a different kind of passion? Uh, absolutely, and that makes up. It's actually a really good point that I think you made that. You know, it was it was always a dream of yours, but some designers may not really have that dream. They want to be an interior designer, but they are maybe struggling. Maybe there's just not enough work for them locally, or they are going through a, a dry spell, and a product line can actually supplement that income, which is always a great motivator, I think, a little bit of cash flow, you know. Um, and was that part of your thinking as well? Lori, you hit on a huge point, and I had yes, in fact, yes, because you know, someone once said to me um, in the not so long ago, you know, in the past few years, as the marketplaces have been changing, that it's also good to have multiple revenue streams. So, uh, it, you know, if one maybe isn't doing what you want or maybe you have other interests multiple interests is it possible to do have multiple revenue streams absolutely it's not as difficult I believe to bring a product to market as you might think and maybe as it used to be it's a whole different ball game it doesn't have to you're not reinventing the wheel there are people to help you uh, friends, communities that you're involved in, uh, which is so important. You know, all of us, we have so many connections and friends, and every, you know what? Don't you feel that all of us want to help each other? Oh, well, we definitely do here in the interior design community, and I think that there are a lot of communities like us that really want really want to help each other, and I, I think that that experience, and even what we're sharing here today, is all about helping someone else who might be going through this same struggle. You brought up actually a really great point that it's not as as difficult as it used to be and I think that's obvious with the internet. I mean you have a website, your website can essentially be 
you know, selling your services and also selling products, it's it's as simple as adding another tab and having some sort of e-commerce set work done to your site. So I want to know, is that the path you took or did you, how did you start your two, you have two brands, how did you start them? Yeah, um, the one brand is Born Home Kitchen, which is a uh, line collection of cabinetry, and now I have a dream uh, for that line that I'd like to create, uh, actually they're already designed, stock pieces, and high-end stock pieces, and sell them online in, in one way or another, which we can talk about. And now my thinking behind, behind that is, you, you know, many of us know we go to a flash, flash sale site, we may see a handbag for $14,000. We may see that hand, I mean, that's on my, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't buy those. But I see those bags out of stock. I'll see that people have bought them. There is a high-end market out there. There is a market where, th that's my point. Whatever it is you want to sell, you want to partner with a manufacturer to build something, there, there is a market for it. So I, I may have gotten off track a little bit um, from your question. No, actually that's, that's so perfect that you said that because I actually had a conversation with a designer early this, earlier this week and you know, she's developing a product line for her website and she said, you know, there are things that I can do that I know from my own personal experience how to make the product a little bit better. I can, you know, have it manufactured the way I want because yes. I know this is how my clients would want it and this is the tr a trouble that we're constantly facing with what's out there in the market. Who knows better than an interior designer for their local market what what the issues are with the product and could fix those issues with the product line, right? Yeah, absolutely. What are the pain points or what are the, um, you know, what are the solutions? What are better aesthetics? And you know what? We all know uh, even large, huge companies, they're collaborating. How many small companies are there, small, medium companies, who would love to collaborate with us to private label um, their products to do special finishes uh, for you? I, I can tell you that so many would love the opportunity so they can have different revenue streams too. So uh, it, it's a perfect time and it's a good time too because I Personally, I have. You don't have to invest a lot of money in it. Um, it. The design, for example, whether it's cabinetry or something else, you can have photorealism. You can have drawings. You can have photorealistic drawings. You don't have to have a million pieces made up. You don't have to do that. You can you can show realistic renderings. Now, then there's also my other brand, Scandinavian Made, uh, which are actual products, and I just came back from Sweden into what I call the wilds of the Swedish countryside, where I actually went and picked out rugs um, woven by, you know, women in their homes. And I, I, just, took a, I just took a risk. It wasn't a huge risk. Um, it was pretty good, uh, pretty good risk, but I picked out about 157 rugs and I'm having them shipped here. And that came out of passion. And let me tell you, um, I've sold them before on One King's Lane. I've sold them before from my website. I've sold them. I've taken out ads in different places. There are so many ways to sell whatever it is you want to sell. So maybe that's a roundabout answer. Um, yeah, that's great. To that's the marketplace. Great. You know, I think that that's a really um, a great answer because I think that there are a lot of people that are in that same situation where they think that this is an overwhelming task, that they would have to do s such a huge investment to get the photography done, to get the descriptions done, to add, you know, to develop their website if their website isn't is an e-commerce friendly. Um, but there are so many you know, blog templates. There are so many um, platforms out there that have built-in SEO features that, you know, it's a minimal investment to get 
the website up and running, and then on top of it, you can work with the manufacturer, I think, to get some of these photos. Oh, yes, absolutely. One of my favorite uh, platforms uh, actually is Squarespace. Squarespace has a very, very simple uh, e-commerce solution. I've also used uh, a company called, a platform called Volusion. In the past, there are so many e-commerce, and it's so easy. Um, of course, it does help if you have some photography skills, some basic photography skills because your brand has, it, photography is important, let's face it. I won't say that that's easy and simple. It's critical to the um, the image that you portray, that the photography should be of good quality. Does it have to be professional? I don't think so. I think if you work at it and you, you know, you work at it a little bit, um, you know, I feel that you can do good, decent photography. But, but that's important. Yeah, absolutely. And you actually will probably have you on in a few weeks talking about photography because you know there are some tips and tricks that Susan has extensive experience with photography she's a fantastic photographer even though she thinks of herself as an amateur she does a really great job I think and I've worked in the photography business for a long time um, and I think that she has some great tips and tricks to share that will help you in that process too so make sure you definitely come back for that show if you're really considering this um, you know, there's another there's another big thought to this. You know, I started Customized Walls as a product line, and it was, you know, initially as a, a you know conceptually a, in the beginning as a product line. And my all my overall goal was to take a product line, put it together, really get to know interior design. I came from the printing industry, um, and find out what designers really liked for patterns, what colors were good, what, you know, what what designers would want in a wallpaper, and then work with e-commerce partners to, to reach a bigger level. And you've touched on that with flash sales, but there are many different e-commerce companies out there who would be willing to take product. Has that something uh, been something that you've done personally, Susan? Have, I'm not sure Have if you I put your product on other e-commerce sites? Um, uh, yes. Well, I've had it on, on my own website. I've done Joss and Maine. I've done One Kings Lane um, a couple of times. Uh, I've had it, I've had taken out ads, for example, in Design Milk. There are blogs that, that get a ton of traffic and they don't cost a whole lot to advertise so I've done that too but you know what I'm going to come back to the community part of it because when you engage when you engage with your community and you're engaging with other brands who want to support you everyone wants to support each other it's unbelievable you're engaging you're meeting when you when you you don't you can't wait for people to come to you you have to get out and engage and you will expand your network you'll meet other brands you'll meet other PR professionals and it's it, it, it's just such a rewarding um, you know that will exponentially expand your uh, uh, you know your your marketplace yeah really, I mean there really are well. tons of brands out there who want to collaborate you know they might be selling a you know a kitchen you know kitchen appliances and and your rugs for instance might go really well in a photo shoot for for their for the kitchen appliances so there are lots of ways that you can collaborate with partners that are either brands or partners that sell through e-commerce e-commerce is great because it's already online and there's no you know real investment in shipping it to someone to have anything done it's it's you know, you send yeah. them photographs and they put it into their product catalog, you know. Yeah, and don't forget how easy it is to pitch, to, to form relationships with editors. There are endless, whether we're talking blog, print, uh, you know, whatever we're talking, magazines or, you know, anything. What Once you begin to, again, um, engage in that design community you will come across editors and you'll be talking to them and and if it, it's easy to pitch it's a that's another wonderful way to get the word out yeah and, you, you're and they're always looking they're always looking right 
Right, and you're coming at it with experience. You know, there might be another manufacturer out there who's coming, and they have, you know, they have a whole big catalog. But you have something very specific that that you can talk about it having been a user. So you can say, I created this line because it does this, and I couldn't find it. That's something that. They they would eat up because if it's not available through some and it answers a problem that's the same thing that they want to do. Well, yeah, I mean it's about being a targeted uh, niche. What you have to do is you have to define who's your customer. Who is your customer? Is it B two B? Is it B two C? Uh, what are the demographics of that customer? And then go to where that that customer is and of course then we get into things like Pinterest and uh, communities and Google Plus and, and you want to go where your customer is and get that message out and as we know all roads lead back to your website right so and and what what is it 80 percent of women are on Pinterest yes and yeah, so and, and I will say this. I have to say I have to make this point that I have been so random and undisciplined in a lot of my social um, interactions and social strategy. Nonetheless, I have made tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars from products that I've sold. So you don't have to be perfect. You don't right. have to, you really don't, I mean, what do you have to say about that, Lori? I think that that's definitely true. You can't, you don't, I know what, you're only one person or you're, you have a small team. You know, it's impossible for you to really totally compete with a big boys. You know, it just isn't in the cards. But if you partner with them and you're, you're in line with them and your product meets a need, then it's, it's a win-win for everyone. And you touched a little bit about, you know, having it on your blog and then it all roads lead back to your blog. And that made a really, that's a really great point because I think that it does two things for you, right? First of all, um, the people who come to your blog, to your blog or to your website to look at your design services, they might not become clients but might find a product that they really love that they purchase, right? So mm -hmm. you're already getting traffic and if they decide not to buy your service, you're at least able to sell them something if you're offering a product line. Um, and then if you're talking about putting your products on other sites and it says, you know, you know, sometimes it says where the product comes from or something like that on depending on the site, going back to your website, now this whole group of people who might not have been exposed to your website at all because they were searching on a big huge e-commerce company find your website and you are able to possibly sell design services and other products there. So it's such a big win-win. You know, it's it's it it's something like your site is already there. It's you already have it. You already have your design services. It does take a little bit of work. I'm not going to lie. It's a website management. Yeah, yeah not, but the but <laughs> you know what? Um, back to my point I, you know, you don't have to be perfect and perfectly disciplined. And you know, I certainly haven't haven't been. We're all human. You know, we're all busy. You do the best you can. But I mean, it certainly helps. Like I say, to have good photography and to and if you and the website when all roads lead back to that website, then you can see the multiple revenue streams, such as design services, such as consultations, perhaps such as particular products that are exclusive. Those products are exclusive, and you may want to break up and create more products that maybe you want to pitch to a brick and mortar store, maybe you want to pitch to an online. Um, an online store that are exclusive just uh, you know just to them so you can be creative in your marketing of your products as well yeah and we talked about we talked about that it all comes back to your website but I was wondering do you think that designers have an edge when they when they have the product line on their site and they're actually work you work with clients, you've worked with clients more than I have, but having those unique products on your site, 
are, are you better able to service your clients? One of the big complaints we hear over and over again in the community is that designers are losing income from online shopping. You know, their clients are shopping and buying the products online. But if you had your own private label line available on your e-commerce store and you were pushing your clients more towards your own products that were private labeled, they can't shop them, right? That's the beauty. That's the beauty of it, of having that exclusivity, having the private label, having your own brand, uh, and having, you know, maybe you have a, a separate website for the brand, too. Uh, and, and then the question is, do you want to sell them, you know, do you want to sell them just to the trade? Do you want to sell them mainstream to the public? Uh, do you want to use places like, um, you know, House or Pinterest or certainly Modanus is a yes. good place yeah. to Modanus put in your catalog? They're, Gotta be, yeah. they're coming up with a new site. I, I, you know, it's all top secret, but I'm hearing little whisperings, and it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, for because, I mean, <laughs> but Modanus is, um, has a cachet to it, uh, and it has, um, you know, some really, some, some products that you just don't see in other places, and they're curated. They're beautifully, beautiful curated. They're not just anything and everything. Each one is curated. So, so when you go on the site, you have this feeling of, um, you know, uh, boy, you're in a special place where, you know, the the people from the site really care about the products and what they present. So that's a little bit about Modanus. So it's another yeah. great spot. And on top of that, you know, there are a lot of these sites that were built by great programmers, but I will say that Modenus, that's M-O-D-E-N-U-S uh, dot com, that site, we know we know Veronica well, the owner of the site, um, she's a fantastic person, but she actually is a designer, so it's a designer who made it too, which is a difference, I think. And not only that, but, but she is the one person in our community, um, I mean, maybe there are others, but she goes to you know the the design <laughs> fairs around the world. Yeah. So she knows. Um, you know she knows quality. Yeah. And she know she talks to the craftspeople, to the uh, you know designers, to the manufacturers. So that's unique. It's a great resource. Yeah. I know that she's on Blog Tour London right now, so you can ha follow the hashtag Blog Tour LDN. Sounds like an ad for her, but we actually just really love her. <laughs> we and do. It's just great stuff. I actually went on Blog Tour London last year, and the you know just the photographs you're going to see through Instagram or on Twitter, it's a great idea to give you um, inspiration about starting your line because there's so many great unique pieces that you see when you're at some of these European shows. There's some really daring stuff and really outlandish stuff and it's kind of gives you a little bit of inspiration when you're looking at your own line. Yeah. I mean, you know, it also depends on how much risk uh, you want to take. If you want to, say, for example, purchase inventory, um, that, you know, you don't have to even yeah. purchase a lot, Lori. You don't have to purchase a lot. You can have 20 items up on your website, your e-commerce, you know, 20, 30 items. I mean, I, I went crazy when I was in Sweden. I got, you know, well over, well over a hundred rugs, and and that's because I I just really had this passion for it. But but then I also went to a craft fair and I got a few of this, a few of that, a few of that, which I'll be putting up on my website. So you know what? There's no rules. Do where do what what interests you. Uh, you don't have to take a big financial risk. Um, something like Squarespace DIY, beautiful, gorgeous templates. Um, simple e-commerce solutions, and and a million places to find a marketplace. Yeah, and I wonder if you could even visit your local, you know, your local crafts fairs and your local area, and that you know you're finding these unique pieces, and you have the designer eye to kind of put that together and make it into a little collection. And so you could buy, you know, three or four of one, you know, of each, and sort of. You know, photograph them and have your inventory really changing and keeping it fresh. Yes, and in fact, it's funny you say that because there's a store, there's a very big store that has a bunch of 
um, vendors within the building, I have this tiny little spot in this store in my local town, in my local town, what is that's an oxymoron or whatever you call it, and, and I just have like 10 rugs there. You know, but that's, that's, yeah, so there's so many ways to reach, to reach yeah. out, whether it's brick and mortar, you know, a little bit, your fall fairs, so you have fall fairs out in your local towns, things like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all about putting together those, those individual, you know, separate little revenue streams. I'm a huge proponent of that. Things do go away. When, before I started customized walls. I was in um, consumable sales. I did a lot of consulting, but I also had um, consumables are like the, the canvas and things like that that people printed on. Um, I specialized in the fine art market and I had, a, I had a couple of huge customers and I have to say working with those customers became kind of easy, you know, after getting them and you know, they would place three-month orders, I would process it, and then the check would come, you know, and sometimes they go away, you know, just, and, and that's the nature of business. I wasn't, when I, I used to have Tom's Kincaid, and, you know, he, wow. and go, go, yeah, it was a big account. I made six figures from one account, um, but they, sometimes they cycle, you know, they, um, a printer um, company came in and offered them free printers, which was something I couldn't do at the time. So, you know, obviously they went with them because they gave them free printers. I don't blame them, but, you know, accounts do cycle. And, I mean, I know interior designers are used to that because they finish one job and start another job with a new client. But, you know, that, you know, things can go through a lull. And having those different revenue streams really can give you a little bit of insurance. And on top of that, when you are in the in the you know maybe the end game, when you maybe want to slow down a little bit, it can give you an income stream that even would maybe be something that would become a legacy that you could pass on to your children that might become an income even when you're retired. So I mean, it doesn't take a lot to kind of keep that up, and you can kind of do away with the design services after a period, correct? Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't take a lot. You know, I've just kind of listened to my inner voice and I've I've kind of transitioned um, away from doing local kitchens and like I said more into uh, national consulting which I enjoy and then the products um, you know and then my line of cabinetry and uh, you know it's it depends on what you want to. You know, it's probably a little tougher if you want world domination. You know, I was never interested. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I was, you know, I, I don't, me personally, I don't need world domination, although I do like money. <laughs> I like money. I like, you know, to uh, whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, so, so what's your motivation? Is it a little extra security, is it world domination, is it just, you know, extra dinner money or extra, you know, money for home improvements or whatever. You know, just be real, uh, real with yourself uh, and, you know, also follow your, you know, passion because then it becomes fun. Yeah. Then it becomes, it's more fun and, and also ask, um, find a board of directors of like-minded uh, people in your industry and like we have this wonderful design community and get gather and ask their opinions and show them what you're doing and and you know don't just don't just be all by yourself you know ask for other people's help they're so happy to give it absolutely well it looks like it's the end of our show unfortunately this half hour went by so quickly as it always does um, one parting tip for you from you Susan Oh, um, you know, I put you on I the just, spot. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. Um, I just have to say, uh, well, I'm going to say two. Engage with other people. Don't wait for them to come to you. Just put it out there. If you're not well known, particularly if you don't have such a big network, just keep the drumbeat going. That's really the, the best tip I can give. Keep the drumbeat going over and over within a Probably within a couple of months, you'll begin to form relationships. I have good, strong friends, um, yourself included, who are just from 
you know, uh, just from online. And I know we many of us can say that, but for those of us who are who haven't done that so much, don't wait for people to come to you. Go, go. That's fantastic advice. Thank you so much, Susan. I really appreciate it. Thank you. you. <laughs> uh, make sure that you visit us on interiordesigncommunity.com mm -hmm. and, of course, always here on Google+. And let us know any time if you need any help because we are actually a community that does love to share and give, and give advice. You know, we've all have been through th similar things like this, changes. So if you have a question, feel free to tag me. Feel free to tag Susan. We'll try to help. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye. <laughs> Bye.